if you are supposed to perform small signal analysis on this bipolar junction transistor the first step you have to keep in mind is to compute the collector current the quiescent collector current the moment you can compute the quiescent collector current the first thing you can estimate in a small signal model so this is your uh, this is your small signal model okay so in this small signal model the parameters are three important parameters there is two resistors and one dependent current source so you need to find gm you need to find r pi and you need to find r not all the three parameters are uniquely determined by the collector current the quiescent collector current so if you know the quiescent collector current then you can calculate gm that will be icq that's your quiescent collector current or the dc collector current divided by vd vd is your thermal voltage the value of vd is around 25.9 millivolts at 300 kelvin so if we had given you a different temperature it will be 25.9 millivolt into t upon 300 kelvin so for any other temperature you just extrapolate it uh, and then find it from this equation directly find it from this equation okay it's a linear dependence so therefore you find it from this equation now r pi is simply given by beta upon gm so that will be uh, beta into vt upon icq and finally we said r naught is given by mod of va upon icq where va is what we called as early voltage so what is early voltage you draw the output characteristics of a bjt so if you know the output characteristics of a bjt we said ideally it is supposed to the collector current is supposed to remain constant is supposed to remain constant with the, with the collector emitter voltage vce even if you change vce collector current should remain constant but what happens in reality it increases slightly so we said you take this graph and extend it extend it all the way onto the x-axis the point where it intersects that we called it as the early voltage and uh, to find the slope here that that will become inverse of the slope will be r naught that we said will be equal to very closely it will be equal to mod of va upon icq and i told you the value of early voltage the value of early voltage will typically be in the order of uh, 50 volts this is for old discrete bipolar junction transistors so these old discrete bipolar junction transistors will be you know the size of your uh, maybe you know a thumb i mean it, it's even smaller okay so those are the discrete transistors so they they would be looking cylindrical in shape i think i have showed you guys in the first lecture uh, i think yeah, so this is how the old uh, BJTs, in fact, uh, this looks a more modern version, but these, these are all newer versions of BJT. You can also, this is one of the, these are called discrete BJTs, meaning you will actually place them on a printed circuit board and solder them, okay? But there is also integrated IC BJTs. IC BJTs, BJTs which, which will remain inside an integra integrated circuit, you can't see them through naked eye. I told you guys when the dimensions are very small, it becomes difficult to see them through naked eye. The, the small signal model which we are drawing right now is valid for both discrete ICs, with ICs which look like this, discrete BJTs which look like this, or the BJTs which are fabricated inside a chip. In, for example, uh, if you take your uh, microprocessor chip, I don't have an example here, but mostly your, if you take any microprocessor chip or a, typically your cell phone, if you open up your cell phone, there will be an analog chip it will be around a millimeter, um, uh, a few millimeters on either side, 2 mm cross 2 mm. In that you will have thousands of such transistors, not BJTs, but MOSFETs. Now those devices also will obey, for those analysis also we follow a similar rule. And what we will be teaching you in this entire course is mainly integrated circuit design. Meaning design, a design of circuits that will go inside a chip. So that's what we will be teaching you in this course. Okay, so finally, what we have come to this conclusion is whenever we are going to do a small signal analysis, why do we do small signal analysis? I gave you an example, a weak signal from a microphone needs amplification. You want to amplify a very weak signal coming from a microphone. So we are using a device called a bipolar junction transistor for amplification. Now this amplification, it's called small signal amplification. 
okay and i said that a bjt by its by its nature fundamentally it's a non linear device because it's a non linear device for it to give you a certain gain we said we are first going to bias it we are going to ensure that the output characteristics it's you are you are going to keep your device in this region in the output characteristics and also in the input character the transfer characteristics you are going to maintain a certain quiescent uh, you know a quiescent voltage across base emitter and that will lead to a correspondent a corresponding quiescent collector current okay so you will ensure that your device is first biased only when your device is biased it can then give you amplification okay so if your de device is not properly biased you will not get you will not be able to get amplification out of the device so the first step is you have to bias the device you have to ensure that it is in this region and i told you give you a reasoning why if you lie in this region especially within the in the active region you get amplification so what we are going to do right now is you are a design engineer now your goal is to design an amplifier to get a certain gain out of it you might need a gain of 10 100 and so on so how does a designer proceed before you actually implement a circuit first we we will normally do some quick hand calculations so that's what in the first few lectures we will be focused on okay we will teach you how to do those quick hand calculations first i'll take you through a rigorous a very brute force way which is for one or two lectures but after that everything should become more intuitive to you you should stop using small signal models and analyze it based on intuitions that's what that is the level of expertise we expect you to develop through the through the course as i told you whether it's in mid semester or end semester we don't expect you to draw small signal models we never ask you that is something they ask you in es electrical sciences in micro e it is assumed that you know small signal models from that you are supposed to draw inferences and intuitively you are supposed to derive the results okay so first this exercise the one or two lectures we are going to teach you this i'll i'll teach you how to solve problems that's only to take you through that and get you into the mode of uh, of being able to solve problems in bjt is very quickly okay so fine so i told you that given a circuit you should be able to draw a small signal model like this and the first your goal should be to find if the if if a bjt circuit is given to you your goal should be to find the quiescent collector current okay i'll also tell you that sometimes you may have to check if the circuit is in saturation active region or not that check can also be performed when you are analyzing the circuit we will come to that when we take an example okay i was just coming to this the value of early voltage which is needed to compute r not will be around 50 volts for discrete devices what i showed you which is discrete or huge devices it will be around 5 volts or even lesser 5 volts is still a large voltage for uh, integrated circuit bjts bjts that you will normally find on integrated circuits will it will be around 5 volts beta is what we call as current gain of a bjt that's the ratio of collector current to base current that's beta beta will typically be in the order of 100 to 200 for discrete bjts discrete bjts are the, what i have shown you now which is they are well they are whole, the whole product they are just manufacturing one device in a discrete bjt is just one device in an integrated circuit on the other hand in the same area you can accommodate many many such devices hundreds of such devices the area that i have shown you can accommodate a lot more devices okay in an ic bjt in an integrated circuit bjt typically beta values will be in the order of 20 to 50 these are some typical values for beta the current gain when ic versus discrete bjts okay so that's it that's it about small signal models just one final point i told you guys there is other model called t model it's just the same modified version of pi model so in a pi model you have the the model in the shape of the symbol pi so you have gm v pi this vbe the base emitter voltage small signal voltage is also called v pi in a pi model so this will be v pi the base current will be flowing through this this is your collector current um, ideally collector current should just be gm v pi but it will also be dependent on vce as well so this is vc ve 
this is r not so this becomes your new collector current so look at the small signal current collector current your small signal collector current will be gm v pi plus the voltage across r not is vc minus ve which i call it as vc by r not this is your collector current small signal collector current in the presence of finite output resistance now there is other model which we called it the t model again that resembles the shape of a t so that is written this way so this will be um, so for example this is base emitter so here we have a resistance instead of r pi we have a resistance called r e so the difference is that so this is gm v v b e or v pi this i calls i can also write it as beta times i b and this is your collector terminal so now if you see the the current which is actually flowing through r e is actually i e which is beta plus 1 times the base current okay the collector current which is okay, current which is flowing through the resistance r e here is beta plus 1 times the base current and the value of r e we said was equal to alpha upon gm which is approximately equal to 1 by gm which is nothing but equal to vt upon the quiescent collector current okay these are the three parameters we derived for a bjt the small signal model of a bjt we derived all these three parameters so now i'll take some problems and analyze it the problems i am going to take right now these are problems from your, i was teaching electrical sciences at that time so they are mostly applicable for discrete design but the same way i mean it's just num voltage numbers will change that's it instead of you see the discrete design the supply voltage might be minus plus minus 15 volts but in a circuit the ic design it will be around plus 1 volt or 2 volts or it might be 2 volts or 3 volts or even 5 volts okay depends on the design it will be in this in this range the discrete design the supply voltage can be even larger that's it so i'll uh, take you through some standard problems in uh, bipolar junction transistors and then we will solve it okay so first so when you are given a bipolar junction bjt circuit how do you go about analyzing it so first a circuit is given to you this way so a dc voltage of 10 volts is applied at the base terminal 100k resistance is at the base terminal rc value is given as 1 kilo ohm and the collector is connected or the rc other end is connected to a 20 volt supply now you are supposed to analyze the circuit so usually whenever you are given a circuit first step you assume that it is an active region and go ahead and analyze it assume it is an active region if it is an active region what does it mean base emitter junction is in forward biased base collector junction is reverse biased now whenever a device is forward biased i said that to mathematically analyze diodes and pn junctions and junction based devices it's impossible accurately to analyze them it's impossible so we are going to make certain assumptions what is the assumption whenever the diode is the bjt is conducting when base emitter is in forward bias i am going to approximate the base emitter region with a cut in voltage look at this model if you look at this model look what am i doing here base emitter i am approximating it with a voltage source the voltage source value is 0.7 volts and between collector to emitter a current of value ic the collector current is going to flow which will have a relationship to the base current into beta take the base current multiply it with beta so can you quickly analyze the circuit i mean uh, do you guys remember this from es electrical sciences or is it is it should i go through that once how about that is this okay or you guys yeah okay okay so now uh, first you want to solve what is the goal you have to find out the quiescent collector current in the circuit that's what your goal is so first you need at least two equations now what are the unknown quantities here vce quiescent is not known we don't know vce quiescent because you are supposed to find it we don't know collector current second thing we know the base emitter voltage we know b quiescent voltage which is i am giving in this example it is 0.7 volts we will normally give you this value we will normally give you the exact value of vb what to use we will typically give you as i told you this is called cut in voltage it varies from designer to designer 
it can be it can typically vary from 0.5 volts to 0.7 volts so this is cut in voltage and i said cut in voltage is very different from your built in potential for a pn junction diode a built in potential is a fundamental quantity it's a unique number once you fix your doping concentrations and area of the diode it's a unique in fact only doping concentrations it's a uniquely determined number 0.7 volts is vbe quiescent this is your dc vbe vbe quiescent or dc or dc voltage on top of this you will apply a small signal voltage see first whenever you are supposed to find small signal analysis first you perform a dc analysis you assume no small signals are present and compute the dc operating point then once you know the dc operating point you know the collector current you forget about the dc circuit draw an ac equivalent and from that compute the gain that's your that's how you proceed right whenever you are given a circuit the circuit is in 10 volts connected between emitter and base no no it's not connected to emitter there is a resistor in between there is a resistor in between the resistor will ensure that it it cannot be turned yet it will take most of the voltage so now look at this if this node voltage is 0.7 do you know what is the voltage at this resistor this resistor voltage is now fixed right on one side it is 10 volts on the other side it is 0.7 so what is the effective voltage across the resistor 9.3 right 9.3 yeah so that is 9.3 volts 9.3 divided by 100 kilo ohms will be your base quiescent base current that's it you know the quiescent base current if you go through this loop write kcl in this loop you can quickly find the quiescent base current which will be 9.3 by 100 kilo ohms so which will be around 93 microamperes okay so that's your base current now your quiescent collector current will simply be beta times ib so it will multiply this by 100 you get 9.3 milliampere that is your collector current your collector current is 93 micro base current times beta you get that see here we are assuming that it is in active region and then where as you see this equation is valid only in active region otherwise this equation is not valid ic will be equal to beta times ib only in active region so in that region it is 9.3 milliampere next let's write kcl in this loop see look the whole total voltage from this point to this point is 20 volts you have a quiescent collector current flowing here so this is the quiescent collector current so that 20 volts will be equal to that whole 20 volts will be equal to the drop across this resistor which i'll call it as icrc plus vc so can i write 20 volts equals icrc this is the equation okay so ic into r so this is rc icrc plus vc i mean you can write kcl as well but kvl as well but now you can directly see um, the total voltage in this loop see this is the total voltage so this node to this node this is ground here between these two nodes the voltage is 20 volts that is also equal to icrc plus vc equation so i'm equating it and finding vc equation i get the vc equation to be okay i get the value of vc equation to be 10.7 volts okay that's the value of vc equation now just for verification you don't need to do this typically we will always give you bjt is in active region but you don't need to but you can check vbc based collector junction has to be reverse biased which means from the calculation you should get vbc should be less than 0 because base to collector junction is an npn npn transistor so base collector has to be reverse biased okay this is an npn transistor right so you have p in between n and n here so this is emitter collector base so this junction has to be reverse biased so vbc will be 0.7 uh, vb the base voltage the base voltage here at this point this is v base emitter voltage is zero i can assume this is ground this is ground emitter voltage so the base voltage is 0.7 minus collector voltage is 10 10.7 vc okay i can write it as vbe minus vc that will also work fine okay vbe minus vc so i your base collector voltage is vbe minus vc which will be minus 10 volts so therefore it is indeed in active region of operation it's it's negative
that's it so ha uh, so secondly how did you get the point sum in that part no no it, it i did not get it it is it is given in the question right so we assume that the base emitter is forward biased if the base emitter junction is forward biased that point 0.7 is given to you in the question itself whenever i told you whenever you have a diode if if you want to analyze the circuit which contains a diode which is forward biased i told you mathematically if you have to analyze it using exponential equation it will be impossible so what do we do we we use a di ideal diode model we replace the diode with a voltage source of value v gamma cut in voltage that cut in voltage in this example happens to be 0.7 volts okay sir thank you yeah okay so this is your voltage now now we, what we will do is i have taken another example i, I have shown you that this analysis see this i just do this for first time in electrical sciences so students there we often give questions where it might go out of active and all we we don't do that in micro e okay now let's assume i increase the value of the resistor if i increase the value of the resistor see base current is determined by this loop base current is still 93 microampere right that is simply 9.3 volts divided by 100k that is not changing so if your collector so collector current is also not changing collector current is also 9.3 milliampere that is remaining the same so 9.3 volts was dropping across this and 10.7 volts was dropping across this now what will happen i'm increasing the resistor if i increase the resistor what will happen to the voltage drop across the resistor resistor it will increase the voltage drop across rc will increase which means vce will reduce vce will start reducing so now we are trying to find out is there any condition where i can push the device out of saturation is there any condition where i can push the device out of saturation so what i've given you out of active region so what i'm saying is that i'm assuming rc to be 2.5 kilo ohms almost i've increased it to 2.5 kilo ohms and now see what happens now in the same equation you when your rc is 2.5 we will calculate the new vce which will be 20 volts minus your ic into rc new ic into rc so that turns out to be minus 0.3 minus 3.25 vce reduces and it is even become negative so now you can easily see it, the device is no longer in active region okay because vce is negative so usually vce should be greater than something called vce sag this is typically in the order of 0.2 volts okay there is a very interesting reasoning why it come where it comes from um, typically your vce equivalent will be um, vcb minus v b e is that right or, or rather v e b sorry vcb minus v e b okay or i can write it as uh, v b e minus v b c with a whole minus sign yeah that's what says it the thing is that we have assumed it is an active therefore i assumed i c equal to beta i, I b i assume that it is an active and assume this then i'm showing it's uh, it's not an active so therefore this assumption is not valid that's what i'm saying i first assumed it is an active and then derived it first you should assume otherwise you will not be able to show anything right here first assume that it is an active then show that it's not valid so you should not use this so the region of operation is not active okay the region will be the region see under what what do you think will be the region then if it is not active what do you think is this region this device is going to be in so look at the base voltage here yes saturation why did you guys say it is saturation see there are only two regions right there are only two regions possible it has to be either cut off or saturation if not if not active there are only two other regions is it in cut off is the device in cut off yeah why is it not in cut off why why is it not in cut off yes that's the point so base emitter is still forward biased right so this loop look at this loop emitter is at ground but base is at a higher voltage because it's connected to 10 volt through a resistor 
okay it is still there is some feeble current flowing but still this is at positive voltage so there is some path for the current in this part so this junction is forward biased the only other possibility is this will also become forward biased because we just showed it's not in active it's not in cut off so therefore it has to be in saturation that's it okay so this again these are all we may not even ask you questions based on this but as i told you i'm just taking you through that quickly we will come to more complex problems so now let's analyze so this sir yeah so could you show the solution of the tbs machine what what solution oh, yeah tell me. uh the upper side this one the answer oh uh, yes yes now i'll upload the slides itself okay okay i'll upload it probably after one, once i finish teaching i'll upload it yeah so now um, the second question is this you are given a vcc of 15 volts rc here is given to be 500 ohms and this is rv is 100 kilo ohms now look at this there is no separate dc source the same supply is used for biasing the transistor as well the base region as well now tell me how do you go about solving this circuit so first can you tell me what will be your base current assume same way vbe in active region is 0.7 what is your base current this is 15 volts so what is the voltage across this 0.7 volts base emitter junction is forward by so it is 0.7 so at, at you look at this resistor rb at this end it is at 15 volts at the other end it is 0.7 volts yes so the voltage drop across rc is 14.3 divided by 100 kilo ohms so it is around 143 see ex learn to express units in microamperes and milliamperes so it is 143 microamperes yeah it is 143 microamperes so 143 microamperes and beta is 100 so if beta is 100 you get 14.3 milliamperes your quiescent collector current multiplied by beta multiply this 143 micro into 100 so my, so milli will be milli is 104 minus 3 so i can write 1 micro ampere as 104 uh, minus 3 milli ampere so therefore it will be 14.3 milli ampere the quiescent collector current once you know the quiescent collector current so what is the vc quiescent vc vc is the total voltage is 15 volts 15 volts minus ic rc ic is 14.3 rc is 500 kilo ohm so which is i can write it as 1 kilo ohm upon half half of a kilo ohm milliampere so milli and kilo cancels out so you will be left with 7.15 15 minus 7.15 so will that be uh, 7.5 into 2 is this so it will be 7. how much is that 85 yeah okay that's it so this will be your vc quiescent collector quiescent collector current quiescent voltage vc quiescent so once you know the quiescent vc i mean now you can easily verify i mean collector voltage is let's say this collector voltage is at 7.85 volts and base voltage is at 0.7 volts so obviously it is in reverse bias so it is in saturation as uh, act uh, sorry uh, active region base emitter forward bias base collector reverse bias so that's what i have written here so uh, this is i think 7.85 is that okay they make again this is a, a trivial problem right so you guys got it so you have any doubts in this Uh, sir can you repeat after uh, we found uh, vceq yeah after vceq once you see that the problem is finished after that point vceq is 7.85 volts now what did i tell you i told you you assume the device is an active now you are supposed to verify if it is an active or not so first look at the base voltage base voltage is see imagine there is one this is what npn transistor so in your mind just imagine there is a diode here and there is another diode here 
okay now this diode this diode which is present here this diode is already forward biased and this node voltage happens to be at 0.7 volts with respect to ground because gamut result ground now look at this node voltage here this node voltage is 7.85 volts so when do you say if a diode let's say you take a diode and you are asked to find if the diode is in reverse biased or forward biased what is the condition this, let, let me call this as anode this is cathode the voltage at the anode should be greater than voltage at the cathode for it to be in forward bias if it is reverse biased the voltage at cathode the cathode voltage should be greater than anode voltage then we say the di diode is reverse biased so all i'm doing here is i'm visualizing this like a diode and i'm looking at this voltage which is 7.85 volts so that's your cathode voltage that is obviously greater than 0.7 volts so therefore i'm saying the device is in uh, uh, so the collector based junction is reverse biased so therefore this this bjt is in active region okay yeah so now this one is a little bit the same question but a little bit more complicated so guys always apply the same principle and keep solving it see look at this you know this is basically there is a base cuisson current flowing through this and there is a collector cuisson current flowing through this okay so what is the voltage drop across rc see this entire voltage is given to be vcc which is 20 volts that is simply equal to ic rc plus vc equivalent plus ie so this is actually equivalent emitter current through the emitter the current flowing will be equivalent emitter current ic rc plus vc eq plus ic ie re re is uh, the resistance here the whole of this voltage will be equal to vcc you can apply KCR and KVR in this loop and find it, so you will get this. Now, what are the unknowns in this equation? What are the unknowns? See, can I say IC and IE are related to each other? IC and IE are related to each other, so therefore I can write it as VCC equals IC. IE is simply, uh, I, uh, IE is I, IC by alpha. So this is actually IC by alpha, which is slightly greater than alpha, uh, IC. So I can write it as IC into RC plus RE by alpha plus VCEQ. So there are two unknowns. Quizant, you don't know what VCEQ is and then we don't know what is the collector quizant current also. The other equation is this loop. In this loop, what is it? See the total voltage again, see this node voltage. So there is a voltage source. I've just shown it on the other side now. It's same with VCC, which is 20 volts. That is this voltage plus this voltage plus this voltage. Sum of all three voltages should be equal to 20 volts. So that will be 20 volts will be equal to IBRB plus VB equivalent plus IERE. So I can write this entire thing. IE is beta plus 1 RE. So I'll write it as uh, RB plus beta plus 1 re plus vb equivalent equals 20 volts now you know what is vb equivalent vb equivalent is 0.7 so this will be 19.3 divided by this value rb plus beta 1 plus re okay rb plus beta plus 1 is this okay i i i wrote it as beta plus 1 into ib and then now i have only one unknown which is ib equivalent you can find ib equivalent from this so that's what I've written here. I've just diagrammatic. Yeah. Are you always assuming that uh, the transistor is an active region? Yes. 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 If First, like, uh, if that's yes. not the case, uh, if it contradicts that region, it's not in uh, active ah, region. Yeah. Because if, if it is not an active region, you can't easily solve it. Hmm. If you, for you to easily solve this problem, right? For example, I have one equation. I C equals beta times ib that condition is valid only in active that is why i'm able to easily solve these problems i'm still look at this i'm getting two equations equation one equation two now in these two equations there are only two unknowns the unknown here is the ie ib ic they're all related to each other so i'll call them as just one variable the second variable is vc so there are two unknown variables and two equations 
So therefore, you can uniquely solve and find the solution. But if this relationship is not valid, meaning uh, IE is not equal to beta times beta plus 1 IB or IC is not equal to beta times IB, if this is not equal, this condition is not valid, then you have many unknowns. You don't know what emitter current is, you don't know what base current is and all that, you won't be able to solve it. That's the problem. So that is why we first assume it is an active region and solve it. Sir, how did we get the IBRB plus 0.75 plus IERE? Uh, IBRB plus 0.75, you know, how did we meaning? Uh, okay. The first, I understand the first equation that VCC equals ICRC plus 0.7 plus VCE plus IERE. How do we get yes. the second equation? Yeah, okay. See, um, again, this is just a way of visualizing uh, KCL and KVL, okay? So now, what is the node voltage here? This node voltage. VCC. Yes. So, again, this node voltage here is 0 volts, right? This is ground. So, this is the total, totally, this entire voltage from this node to this Okay, so we're taking the second loop instead of the inner loop. We're taking the outer loop instead of yeah, the inner yeah. loop. So, so this is it. the loop I'm taking. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, this VCC will be equal to this. So, by solving these two equations, you'll directly get it. I'm not going there. So, if you, I mean, find the value of RC. I've given you the equation and procedure. You go through the question. You'll understand it. Okay. See, guys, if I might have made one or two calculation mistakes, so ignore that. Procedure is important. So, like, for example, here, I think I've made a calculation mistake. Okay. So, these things you can ignore. Okay. The conceptually, if you get it right, it's okay. When you're going through the, I'll upload the slides, go through them, and then you can see that. Okay. Yeah. Later, once you derive uh, VC equation, then you can verify. VC equation is uh, 7.2 volts. See, VCE can be written as uh, VCB minus VEB. Am I right here? Yes. So this is what I can write it as. Okay. So VCB. Uh, so I, I'll need to find VCB. So VCB should be equal to VCE minus VB. So this is the voltage. I think I should write it this way. Leave that. So the character base voltage will be VCE minus VB. So you usually calculate VCE from your uh, um, KCL equations, KCL and KVL equations. VB is 0.7. So just you can directly verify if VCB is less than zero, then the device is in active region. Yeah. After solving the equations, you have to check this condition. VCB is uh, VCE minus VB. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, because this is an important problem, guys. So with this, we'll finish this class with this problem. So this is one of the most common biasing methods for a BJT. Okay, it's called uh, the voltage divider biasing. So this is, in fact, a very popular biasing technique in uh, discrete design. So discrete design, I told you guys, it's mainly for, uh, you know, uh, di uh, discrete BJTs. So these are BJTs which will be quite large in size. And these are the BJTs. Uh, that you normally place in uh, uh, breadboards or even in uh, printed circuit boards. Okay, if tomorrow, I think in your lab, maybe you will get access to BJTs in your uh, um, third year. When you're doing analog electronics labs, you'll actually see BJTs. Uh, I'm not, I don't think you will be using it in, uh, yeah, there are no labs and even in third year, I'm not sure if, there, if you're going to use it. But in your third year, second sem, you'll use it in analog electronics. At that time, you will be building some circuits using BJTs and then you will see small signal amplification and all that. This is a very commonly used technique for biasing a BJT. This is, this is called resistive potential divider biasing. You use two resistors from the supply. See here previously the circuit I showed you, there was only one resistor. Okay, so you get to play around a lot more when you have more circuit elements. So you add two resistors in this way. Okay, so how do you solve this problem? So one is you can directly write KCLs and KVLs and solve it. Okay, we what we do is we do a smaller and quicker way. We take this part, the biasing arm part, and represent it by its Thevenin equivalent. Okay, they must have solved this problem in electrical sciences as well. 
because what I'm solving right now, these are the problems I used to solve it in ES when I'm teaching ES. So they must have solved it, but I'll just quickly re re refresh it again. So look at this circuit here. I've just redrawn this node voltage is at VCC. So I've redrawn the circuit here with VCC R1, R2 here. Okay, and this is your normal BJT and with RC as it is. Now this section, this part, I'm going to represent it by a thevenin equivalent. So the open circuit voltage at this point across R2 will simply be R2 by R1 plus R2. That's just a potential divider. Okay, see, if you put two resistors, that's called resistive divider. You get the voltage across the resistor R2 will be R2 by R1 plus R2 into VCC. So that's your voltage between these two terminals, open circuit voltage. So that's your thevenin voltage. Now the next thing we need to find is a series resistance, the thevenin resistance. The thevenin resistance will be, how do you find that? Short circuit VCC and find the equivalent resistance C. That will simply be what? R1 parallel R2. That's your thevenin resistance. So the thevenin resistance, if you have a network like this, a voltage source, this is R1 and this is R2, and if you are asked to find the Thevenin resistance, what do you do? Short circuit the independent voltage sources and find the equivalent resistance. I mean, you have to apply a voltage and find the current, but you can directly see there are only two resistors. If two resistors are in parallel, it's R1 parallel, R2. So that's your Thevenin resistance. Now, this circuit you know how to analyze very easily. Once you get to this circuit, you just have to write one loop, KVL in this loop, and there is a voltage source here. So KVL in this loop. So VCC equals uh, ICQ into RC plus VCE. And another equation will be VT minus VBE quiescent by RT will give me the base current, quiescent base current. So once you know the quiescent base current, you know the quiescent collector current, which will be beta times the quiescent base current. Once you know this, you can calculate the quiescent VCE. That's it. You have found, you have found all the quiescent operating point. Okay. And finally, you can always verify if it is inactive or not. So for, if you are it to be inactive, you'll have to ensure VCB should be less than zero. What is VCB? You want, you know, the quiescent collector emitter voltage subtracted from, uh, okay. So VC, uh, VCE, and this should be greater than zero. In fact, VCB should be greater than zero. So you can see that. So subtract it from it. So you just have to see VCB. Uh, I think I'm, I'm sorry. VCB should be greater than zero. So this is actually collector base emitter. So this is NPN, right? It's a, it's a diode in this direction. So if you have a diode in this direction, just ensure that the voltage at the collector are, has to be greater than the voltage at the base. Then this diode will be reverse biased. That's it. Is this problem clear, guys? Is this okay with you guys? Because I'll, this is the last problem I'll discuss today. Yeah. Is it okay with everyone? Just replace a potential divider, potential divider with an equivalent circuit, and you are done with it. That's it. This, this you know how to solve the last part. Last part, see, guys. I'm telling you. Typically, you don't have to verify whether it is in <coughs> active region or not. We will give you only active region, but in case if it is not, you have to check it. To check it, what I'm saying is, once you find the quiescent collector to emitter voltage, how to get VCEQ? Because you, okay, you know, once you know quiescent collector current, you have this equation, VCC equals ICQ into RC plus VCEQ. You know VCC, you know the collector quiescent current, which is beta times the base current, then VCEQ, you can get it from it. Yeah. Once you get VCEQ, yeah. Once you get VCEQ, look, I mean, forget about sign and all that. Look, this is just a diode, right? It's a diode. Don't go by mechanical procedures. It's a diode. You use your intuition. If it's a diode, what, what, I mean, what is the condition? This diode has to be reverse biased. So this is N, P, N transistor. So this diode has to be reverse biased. For this diode to be reverse biased, this node voltage has to be greater than this node voltage. That's it. Can't you verify that? Can you do that? This node voltage, so what is it? This node voltage here is, the emitter is a common terminal. So I can write it as VC minus VB has to be greater than zero. 
then this diode will be in reverse bias. Okay, or I can write it as VC equivalent minus VB equivalent has to be greater than zero. If this condition is satisfied, then I know the base collector junction is reverse biased. Is that okay? The sign part, I mean, you just have to look at it intuitively. That's it. Yeah. See, what does this condition mean? VC minus VB, VCQ minus VBQ is nothing but VCB. If VCB is greater than zero, VBC is less than zero. Base to collector is less than zero. That means base correct junction is reverse biased. Okay, you can look at it in any way. Just one final point to just discuss. I haven't introduced PNP transistors. I haven't introduced PNP transistors. The analysis is exactly the same what we did for NPN. I think I may have some problems for PNP also. Okay. I may have some problems for PNP as well. So, yeah, I have few problems with PNP. Probably I'll solve it in the next class. So once you know how to solve a NPN transistor, it is very similar. PNP as well is very similar. Now, what you need to keep in mind in a PNP transistor is the small signal model is exactly the same as an NPN transistor. You cannot distinguish a PNP and NPN from the small signal models. If the bias currents are same, then early voltages are also same, then the small signal model will look exactly the same. Polarity, everything is same for PNP and NPN. The same is true for NMOS and PMOS as well. We'll come to that at that point. Okay? Yeah. I'll stop at this point. If you have any doubts, you can ask. Otherwise, you can carry on. Sir? Yeah. Sir, 